Okay, thank you very much uh, for organizing this. Uh, I'll just give a brief background to the play that you are, uh, uh, Pooja and I are going to read out. Uh, the name of the play is Teen Sakina Manzil. Uh, it's very unlike the two plays you're studying. One is the, uh, uh, I think Oedipus Rex is the play and Cherry Orchard. So it's very, very different from that uh, kind of writing. Mm, this was a play which was written in 2004 uh, and then it premiered at the Prithvi Festival around that time. Um, the play is partially documented and partial fiction. So it's what we call metafiction, which was a new form of theatre which some of us were trying to explore in, uh, in India. Um, the play is based on a historic incident which uh, transpired in, on April 14th, 1944, uh, about which you know we'll come through. Uh, so on 14th April 1944, basically what happened was there was a huge dock explosion. Uh, there was a ship called the SS Tykin which was parked in the docks and that particular ship, uh, because of a variety of reasons, it blew up. And while it blew up, a whole lot of things just sort of poured into the city. Uh, the reason it became very important is because of the content of that particular ship. There are certain things which I will not disclose that it takes the fun out of the play. The second thing was the time in which this explosion took place. So 1942, as you know, we had the Quit India movement in India, uh, after which most of the Congress leadership, the higher leadership were rounded up and put into prison. And simultaneously, it was the fag end of World War II. And the Japanese, I mean, if you recall some of your World War II history, the Japanese had come almost all the way up to uh, Burma. And there was a likelihood that they would make inroads into India. So there was a combination of three factors. And therefore, this particular incident was something that was never known to the public. The British government made it a point to try to camouflage it as much as possible. So that was a starting point for a research. And since it was 1944, which was relatively recent history, uh, during 2003-2004, one spent a lot of time with another friend and guru of mine who's a city historian, a film theoretician and uh, you know, also had avid amount of uh, knowledge about this particular thing. We met some of the survivors of the 1944, April 14, and their stories and their memoirs and this would be something that we would have interviews with them, go meet them and share. they would share their experiences with us. So that was the work that we did and then a lot of documentation because some of it was there in uh, in passing in a few of the important uh, Gujarati, Marathi and English newspapers. So we would go through some of the old archives and so on. And then that's how this particular play and the characters were created. Uh, <clears throat> Teen Sakina Manzil is a building in that part of uh, Bombay, uh, which is that entire Paidoni area. Uh, so you will get a sense of that Bombay. And the characters are of course borrowed from, a, a lot of it is borrowed from the conversations that I had with some of the people I had met. So that's broadly it. The two characters that we play are uh, both fictional, however, uh, the building does not exist. Uh, it's a, obviously an imagination of the writer. And uh, so this is the backdrop against which the scenario of the play is. The second thing that you should know is that the play will go back and forth into time. Uh, so it will happen in uh, 1994 and then it will keep going back into 1940s, that period. So there will be two sort of uh, stories going on simultaneously and fortunately or unfortunately it's just the two of us who will uh, be reading it. You have to try to enjoy it. Imagine that I am Nasir and she is uh, <laughs> Nasiruddin Shah and she is Meryl Streep and enjoy it as much. We will try to do and give it our best shot. Um, the stage for this uh, this particular play was staged by a group called Working Title and they did about 50 odd shows. Uh, they travelled in India and did an extensive number of shows, travelled to Europe um, and performed there as well. And, uh, so, and interestingly enough, this is one of the few plays that I've written which has actually got translated and got translated into Dutch and it got performed in Dutch and again that was an interesting new thing for this play. So the setting is fairly simple, it's not as complicated as Sahire Sahi or any of the other plays you've seen. There's just two chairs as you see now and that's how the play starts. So, um, so Teen Sakina Manzil uh, and an empty stage, two elegant chairs, a woman. 70. Today. Happy birthday to me. Janam Din Mubarak. Hayya Ho. Getting older and older. But look here, still beautiful. A husn ki malika. Sound as a bell, <coughs> except, <coughs> except for some respiratory trouble. But I'm covered, medically that is. All those years as a nurse has benefited. Look here, let me show you. Pinkish purple pill for catars, henna green pill for painful urination, amethyst blue pill for sclerosis of the joints, carbon black pill for vertigo, battleship grey pill for ap apoplexy, Arctic red pill for cachexia and mint white pill for cataract. All these I swallow and this one I have to chew. It's easy. 
Look, not a single false tooth. Tip top condition. She gulps the medicines. I told the doctor Sahab, he is a solid looking Parsi boy. It is geriatrics. But he continued to prod my torso with his stethoscope. Hmm. The thing with medical science is that it has not come to terms with old age. And my problem is old age. Nothing else. So at that moment, there's a burst of music. She has a walking stick in her hand. She takes that and she thumps on the floor. The music stops. Neighbours have to keep reminding them that there are others who live in Teen Sakina Manzil. That Teen Sakina Manzil is not their whole soul property. It has a sense of history, of tradition. It cannot be contaminated with modern music. See, I have nothing personal against modern music. Like everyone else, I hope that someday it will turn into melody. Sargam. But does it happen? No, never. No Mukra, no Antara, but sure. Again, there's a burst of music. Again, she takes her walking stick and thumps the floor. The music stops. Are, if I had the will, I would pour water from them on them from my balcony. Water with ice cubes. That would show them. The gods must let ordinary people like us select our neighbours. If that's not possible, we should be able to alter their music sense. Mere bus mein hota, to sabko ek line mein bitha kar, main unko music sunati. Zabardasti. There was this film called Chal Chal Re Naujawan whose dialogues were written by that chap who used to come to Baba's shop. Kya tha uska naam? Haan, Satat Hasan Manto. Usme ek bohat pyara communal harmony wala gana tha. Polo har har mahadev, Allah ho akbar. At this point, she swallows the medicines. When I told my plan to that solid looking Parsi doctor boy, he laughed. Kya karta? Bacha hai. Bohat nervous tha. He hadn't diagnosed old age either. And he had no sense of history. Or else he would have known about the bearing of old age on women. He touched my feet when I paid him. His full fee. In crisp one rupee notes. No longer printed, but available if you need to offer them to the deity at Bhuleshwar temple. I told him not to worry. No tension. They tell me the Parsi boy is related to Barjorji Kuvarji Motiwala, who used to live at Kukana house in Dhobi Talao in Girgaon. Ladka khandani hai. Barjorji Kuvarji Motiwala had returned the gold bar which fell through his building roof to the authorities, for which an award of 999 rupees was given to him. Barjorji Kuvarji Motiwala promptly donated this sum for relief work. That was in 1944, ages ago. She again thumps the wa- with her walking stick on the floor. That's not for the music. That's to scare away the rats. There are three of them. I've classified them. The Chachundar is Robert Clive. He's so cute. The bandicoot is General Dwyer. Very khadus. The female rat is Mrs. Lord Mountbatten. She is the most dangerous because she can breed 100 million Mountbattens. At the moment, General Dwyer and Robert Clive are both trying to woo her. But Mrs. Lord Mountbatten is not interested. Thank God. Again, she thumps with the walking stick on the floor. See, this walking stick is useful. Three in one. It can stop the music, scare the rats and one other thing which I cannot recollect. Again a burst of music. Again she thumps the walking stick on the floor. The music ceases. Vapas music. Oof. That's from the east side. MTV. Northeast is Hindi film. Vahan se remix. Over there it's classical. Us taraf par purane fray road se shore or avaz. And beyond that the dockyard. There was a time I could see the farthermost boat on the horizon. Not anymore. The solid looking Parsi doctor boy says it's press biopia. But what does the young man know? I can spot, even today, Elephanta Caves, the North Star in the dusky sky, the mixture of water and milk by the Dudwala Bhaiya, whose family had been providing milk to Teen Sakina Manzil for three generations. With a bit of effort, I can see all. That way, I'm okay. The brain's consumption of oxygen has not diminished, the thoracic cage is solid, the motor nerves are tip top, perhaps an iota of fatigue has set in. Disregarding all that, I pick myself up and go to the ophthalmologist clinic. I have an appointment with Dr. Bhavna Parekh. I had an appointment with Dr. Bhavna Parekh. Cataract operation on 14th April 1994. It was 14th April 1994. My cataract had humble beginnings, a painless blurring of vision. Then there was glare or light sensitivity compounded by poor night vision and double vision in one eye. Now I have all of it. I recall reading about cataract at the Asiatic library. Dharam Sibai recommended an excellent book to me. The book said most common type of cataract is related to aging of the eye. The book diagnosed the cause of my cataract. So when I met the doctor, I was prepared. She asked, family history? I said yes. Medical problems such as diabetes? I said yes. Injury to the eye? I said yes. A jackfruit fell off the tree, bounced on a concrete and rebounded into my eye once. 
medications especially steroids i said no long term unprotected exposure to sunlight i said yes i could not afford sunglasses previous eye, eye surgery i said no the doctor was pleased you know that way books are wonderful i mean life is beautiful but books are wonderful i prefer books to lives when in doubt i recommend books you cannot always trust life anything happens hi toba usually the clinic is overcrowded but today there's one solitary old man all wrapped up i have been waiting for 47 minutes and a lady enters huffing and puffing she looks 100 years old but she is behaving five times her age suddenly i feel so old ancient keeping pace with the changing world is taking its toll today i paid 65 rupees for the taxi 62 rupees actually but the cab driver had no change another 50 rupees to return home 50 years ago with a salary of 50 to 100 rupees a month the family lived royally shuddh ghi shuddh tel sab kuch shuddh aur sachcha tha bhaiya as the kachi business people used to say ke pachi hai baddi parikatha to navti parikatha parikatha ane sher ni parikatha i am sitting quietly minding my business when i hiccup <laughs> the old man who is all wrapped up hiccups <laughs> why am i hiccuping the old man hiccups again <laughs> Stop it! Behave yourself. Look, that's why I don't like to take you out. You're so embarrassing. Shh, chup! Behave yourself. Just then, the sweet girl at the reception says, "Next." I stood up. The old woman stood up. Now, now, act like a gentleman and give the lady a chance. Up, jaiye, ladies first. The old man lets me go. Maybe he is scared of doctors. Maybe he is a flirt. Maybe he thinks I'm as gorgeous as Devi Karani. <laughs> I let the old woman go before me. I say, ladies first. She smiles. Now where did I see in such a smile? I smile. This calls this calls for celebrations. Half a kilo of garma garam jalebis. You know these days I rarely smile. The old woman is gone. I look out of the doctor's dispensary and see the railway station through which I entered the city in the winter of 1940. Things were brewing. I had come to Bombay during the riots. Kaka who had a small factory in Bhavnagar said riots in Bombay were bad for danda. In our village in Saurashtra we had a rating system for riots. Bombay, Ahmedabad, Dhaka, which city had the most brutal riot? So Kaka had jotted down all the riots in a little black book. You see, he was an amateur rioterologist, and Bombay was famous for its riots: Hindu, Muslim, Parsi, Hindu, Shia, Sunni, Mumbai car outsider, Dalit, Brahman, Sikh, Hindu. The point is, I was entering the city during a riot. History moves in cycles, no? As a rule, riots don't need any validation, but this riot could be traced to Lahore. The Muslim League at its annual convention in 1940 had passed a resolution which came to be known as the Pakistan Resolution. That was the first time we heard of Pakistan. No one took it seriously. After all, we had a phenomenon called Bapu on our side. So as I got down from the train, I took the name of God and Bapu to save me from the madness of the mob. He cups again. Kaka said he had heard good reports about a new college in Bombay. When I attended the first day of college, I realized I was the only male. My kaka had admitted me in the newly inaugurated all girls Sophia college. <laughs> I wandered along the back bay area which was opened up for residential sites. I used to walk around Marine Drive from Church Gate Reclamation to Chopati where uniform similar looking buildings housing residential flats had come up. Everyone said they were fashionable but bhaiya I thought they looked like matchboxes. The city was overcrowded 15 lakh people. Everyone who was anyone was complaining about the influx of refugees, the slums, the sickening smell of decay. the beggars rummaging for food in the drains and dustbins that was 50 years ago nothing has changed no the old woman returns she hobbles the old man is waiting he has stopped hiccuping just then i hear a melody so a song comes through that song it sounds familiar hi rabba they playing my song my theme song when and where did i hear this song ah i recall I was out of work after the fiasco at Sophia College. I had got admitted to Elphinstone College. I needed some extra money to support my studies. So Kaka told me to meet Gala Seth, who owned three provision stores. The address he gave me was Teen Sakina Manzil. I adore the song. In fact, every time the song was played, I used to pull out my ribbons. I love ribbons. My goal in life is to have the biggest collection of ribbons. Here, see all kinds of ribbons in each and every color: navras, navbhav, navratna. every single emotion and mood you know just as every word was once a poem every ribbon has a story to tell like this ribbon this this is a ribbon about my ancestral home a village called gulalipur in a district called lalpur in pakistan they call it faisalabad now i don't know why 
When I ask mother about those days, she replies, "Comrade beta, the past is a foreign country. Things are different there." My mother calls everyone comrade. Comrade Baba, Comrade Dudwala, Comrade Panwala, Comrade Viceroy, Comrade Governor General, Comrade Nehru, Comrade Jinnah, Comrade Bapu, and even Comrade God. It had something to do with her father and his father, all communists. Baba used Baba used to tease mother. He would say, "Bye, mur, ek, do, teen, char. Communism is the opium of the asses." Mother would say, "Comrade Baba would never understand." He was so used to exploiting the weak that he could never be sympathetic to the exploitation of the weak by the strong. To which Baba would counter that mother's communist father was a zamindar. The only good thing he did was to educate his seven daughters, all of whom married into rich families. Mother pooped Baba. She said he was oversimplifying things. A lion is not a mere lion. He is made up of the goats he digests. They would trade proverbs till the middle of night. Sawal jawab. I don't know how mother and baba met a traditional illiterate kachi businessman marrying a communist girl with an independent point of view on every subject on earth it was unheard of when i used to pester them baba would say nothing much to it kachi ne bachchi se shaadi kar liya that was that it was a typical rainy day in bombay i reached teen sakina manzil gala seth was not in the shop so i was directed by an assistant to a young woman who was embroidering a ribbon the ribbon was pretty the girl was prettier which thread should i use which opening line should i use what should i embroider on the ribbon how should i attract the attention of this pretty girl what is my violin teacher penny satamkar who lives down the lane tell me whenever i make a mistake a man is not old until his regrets take the place of his dreams apparently it's a well known yiddish proverb my heart is thumping so oh, who is this medium built so so looking unintelligent sort of man I am being drawn to her. Why is my heart thumping? She blushes, she flutters her eyelashes, her cheeks are pink and rosy. Hi Rabba, I'm being attracted to him. Perhaps I think it's love at first sight. Am I falling in love at first sight? I am a great advocate of love at first sight. You know, I think it's a great time-saving labor-saving device. Maybe I should ask this medium built, so-so unintelligent uh, sort of man. As they say, every man is a volume if you know how to read him. But why isn't he saying a thing? Uh oh eh I must wait for him to make the first move or else he'll perceive me to be forward looking a wench I'm trying to speak but all my efforts result in his uh oh eh come on mouth don't let me down this is important for you important for me you've been doing this sort of things for years bag me a runners up prize in the debating society speak up man speak up the mouth is responding it says if a man will begin with certainties he shall end in doubts But if he will be content to begin with doubts, he shall end in certainties. What? 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 Mouth, don't do this to me. The pretty girl is staring at me. I have to say something, anything. But the mouth has other ideas. It informs me. Love is like a game of chess. No one ever won a game of chess by betting on each move. Sometimes you have to move backward to get a step forward. What? 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 The mouth concludes the argument with love is like music. It cannot be translated into words. The mouth shuts up, and all I'm left with is a uh, o oh, a. Eh. You know. I've never heard a finer rendition of a uh, o oh, a. Eh. A uh, o oh, a. Eh. <laughs> such eloquence, such oratory. Wah, kya baat hai, Irshad, Irshad. Really? A uh, o oh, a. Eh. <laughs> you obviously done super specialization in a uh, o oh, a. Eh. Which university? I was about to say a uh, o oh, a, eh, but I pinched myself. Stop it. I was making a fool of myself, so I took a deep breath to clear my mind. My kaka has told me to meet Gala Said. The pretty girl says, "Oh, I see." You see, I want a job with a salary because a salary is very important, and everyone who has a job draws a salary. In fact, according to the Rangekar Board of Conciliation, wages must register a rise because of DA being linked to the cost of living index. What? What am I talking? According to my mouth, which has taken control over all the words pouring out of my mouth, the period 1934 to 1937 witnessed a cut in wages from rupees 34.56 to rupees 27.25. Now, due to the World War II, for which I am not responsible, the wages are what Gala said deems fit. So, I would want a salary and a DA and a bonus. and 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 a glass of water yes <laughs> my mouth was parched what did i said i preferred his o o a as i was about to give him a glass of water i asked him are you an economist you know like adam smith even as i was thankfully gulping my glass of water i heard the song and the song comes again uh ji aur ek glass zarur so she gives me a glass i gulp it again aur ek glass zarur she again hands a glass again i gulp it aur ek glass zarur aur ek glass क्या आप सूखे ग्रस्त इलाके से आए हैं आई आई रिटर्न द ग्लास ऑफ वाटर आई हैड नेवर ड्रंक सो मच वाटर इन माय एंटायर लाइफ शाइली आई आस्क्ड हर हर नेम बैशफुली आई आस्क्ड हिम हिज नेम 
what a coincidence we share the same name shashi, shashi. although technically i was shashi kumar popularly known as shashi i prefer shashi to shashi kumar look baba is come just then gala seth entered he knew kaka from the good old days the terms and condition of my contract were discussed gala seth owned three shops one in teen sakina manzil and two more in musafir khana and prabodh mansion recently had opened a new store in the police barracks he needed me because i was educated and could speak english the thing is gala seth had british customers and it was important to speak to them in the king's language i thought the job was simple until gala seth gave me a long list of items i had to find english counterparts for indian names gala seth explained shashi saab you know dood is equal to milk dahi is equal to curd malai is equal to cream ghee is equal to clarified butter just then there was a burst of laughter mrs gala seth asked what on earth is clarified butter if my dadi offered me clarified butter on my roti i would never eat it gala seth told her to be silent when she guffawed on hearing that khoya mawa was called solidified milk For some reason, Mrs. Gala said, "Called everyone comrade," and so I became Comrade Shashi. Comrade Shashi is so cute. He was so dazed, especially when Mother Gufford and gave him a whack on his back. I took their leave and went to my wadi in Girgaon. For some reason, my back was hurting. You know, in all these years, no man has ever said a uh, o oh, a eh, to me. It was the middle of night. I returned to my kholi for which I was paying rupees six a month. This included five chapatis, dahi, two badams, chai every morning. See, I wanted to make a good impression on Gala Seth and his daughter, so I started working on the translation. Badam equal almond, saaf equal aniseed, hing equal asafoetida, tulsi equal basil, elaichi equal cardamom, dalchini equal cinnamon, shashi equal shashi. What must she be doing now? Aing and oing and aing. Long equal clove, dhania equal coriander seeds, jeera equal cumin seeds. I wonder what is the English equivalent of a uh, o oh, a. Eh? I met Comrade Shashi the next day. I met Shashi ji the next day. She was all dressed up. I was well dressed. I was going to the theater. The theater. Hmm. Don't you think the theater is such a gross waste of time? It's just a way of fooling the people with false pretenses. A place where bad ideas go when they die. I was not going to have the theater belittled, so I retorted. My dear comrade Shashi, the drama's laws its patrons give. In other words, a play is only as good or bad as the intellect and taste of the people of the land. Shashi ji, you know Gandhi ji does not have a high opinion about the theatre. It's considered a distraction from the activity of nation building. But he saw Harish Chandra. Ah, he must have gone to hear the story. You know Gandhi ji is a great admirer of truth. He probably sat through the play with his eyes shut. That's the point, isn't it? One glance at a play, and you hear the voice of another person. Perhaps someone dead for a thousand years. To see a play is to voyage through time, no? No, no, Shashi. You're being charitable to the uncharitable. The theatre is an insidious beast like Medusa, which freezes its audience to stone every night, staring fixedly. It's like the siren, which sings and promises so much, and ultimately leads people to their doom. Say what you want. Today, I am going to the Baliwala Grand Theatre Playhouse. The locals call it Pila House. It's so exciting the way a play opens. A loud bang of exploding anar. The curtain is raised. A hush in the auditorium. The occasional shouts from the vendors. Pista badam, chopri, pankha, utao jaldi. The insistent, incessant extolling of the ticket seller. Khel abhi chalu hua. You know, last week I saw a play. It was a big bore, but something exciting happened. As you know, the drama companies bring their own curtain. This curtain has eight heavy stones to weigh it down. This whole contraption is operated by two masdurs. Usually the curtain the curtain pulling mazdoors doze off so the cue to bring down the curtain is a shrill blast of a whistle during last week's show the doddering king played by a particularly ghastly ham died the corpse was lying on the floor but the curtain pullers were asleep they were awakened by a shrill whistle and so they hurriedly brought down the curtain in the middle of the scene when the dead king saw the eight heavy stones rushing towards his head he got up and ran for his life Later it was found out that the whistle was not blown by the prompter but by a tram traffic conductor on the street. Oh. How I miss the glamour and spectacle of the older dramas. Hmm, well. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, I should have shut up, but my mouth began again without taking any cognizance of poor me. My mouth was at its bombastic best. Everyone can act. It's easy. We do it in real li- we do it in real life all the time. By the same quantum everyone can eat. But do we watch someone eating with pleasure? No. When I'm hungry, I may do so, but that's because I wish I were eating. That's savoury. 
but people don't climb onto the opera house stage grab a fork and spoon start eating and then charge tickets do they we don't put a fork on a wall on an art gallery and call it art or we don't make noises with the clink clank of spoons and call it music no 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 on cue i put my fist in my mouth to prevent my mouth from speaking comrade shashi you're an orange sebi my fist was still in my mouth I extracted my fist from my mouth since it is improper to talk to a lady and a mighty fine one at that with one's fist in one's mouth. Promptly the words poured out. Do you know Raksha Kaki? She is the woman who serves lunch and dinner to 30 35 people daily at our Khanawal. Khanawal is like Raksha Kaki have no holidays ever except on Ekadashi. She is made she makes beautiful rangolis and seven colors to welcome us. She says that a rangoli is true people's art, rich and poor, brahmin, harijan, man or woman. Everyone does it. Not like your theatre, which is a pursuit of the wealthy and the squanderer, highbrow stuff. A place where they find out what they don't, what you don't like, and give you plenty of it. Get it? Get it? Huh? Comrade Shashi, you know nothing about life in Bombay. I've seen Maidani Khel, Dashavtar, Naman, Tamasha, Lazim competitions, Bharut, the Great Shahirs, Kushti, bullfights, Jatras. Ask your Raksha Kaki about it. There is nothing highbrow about the real Bombay, my sweet man. I have attended a double bari by a bhajan mandali in which the two competitors sang insulting things about one another like we are doing right now. I attended a show in which they sang a gun to Bhimrao Ambedkar instead of the traditional invocation to Lord Ganesh. What do you have to say to that? Hmm. I refuse to extricate my fist from my mouth. My mouth was bound to get me into serious trouble. Comrade Shashi, remove your fist from your mouth. It's bad manners. No. Why? I'm training to be a nurse and in my short medical life I've never come across anything like this. Now how I could not explain to her that my mouth was a proponent of free speech and democracy and like all such proponents completely irresponsible. I heard a foot in the mouth but this just then Gala Seth entered. Baba came in with a letter. And that was the first time I heard about Yajuvendra. I was engaged to Yajuvendra. A childhood communion. Yajuvendra's father and Baba had common roots in Bhuj. Baba had done it secretly. Mother was in Lahore in those days. When she returned she did not speak to Baba for 3 weeks. Yajvendra was the only person in the world mother did not call comrade. Yajvendra was out there somewhere fighting for a brave new world. I had not met him for ages. Just the occasional telegram or letter. After I heard about Yajvendra and Shashi ji being engaged, I understood why the great thinkers frittered away such a lot of their t- energy and time on love. A complex kind of warfare, love. Comrade Shashi looked pale. I suppose it has something to do with putting his fist into his mouth. Ah, love. A book of which the first chapter is written in poetry and the rest in prose. It was time to go out. Should I see Pundalik the play or Pundalik the film, which is based on Pundalik the play? So heartbroken, I immersed myself in work. All the food supply was measured in khandi. My mantra was one khandi is equal to forty pounds, and forty tolas is one pound. Now Gala Seth was a fine employer. Like all kachi businessmen, he was thrifty, commonsensical, resourceful. One day I heard him speak Kachi to a Kachi tradesman from Mandvi and I was struck by the multiple Kachi dialects being used in the radius of the port area in Bombay Bhatia Kachi Memini Kachi Khoja Kachi Lohana Kachi Baniya Kachi each with regional variations and then there were the Maplas the Jews the Nagoris the Marathas the Mahars the Mathadis the Kunbis so much of plurality the way people talk walk eat you know I met a vadiya from Madurai and saw him drinking his coffee from a tumbler without touching the edge of the tumbler to his mouth He told me, "It's the one true test for a person from Tamil Nadu. No one in the world drinks kapi in such a manner." Hmm. What sculpture is to a block of marble, education is to the human soul. Arey ba, I must jot this down. I didn't see much of Comrade Shashi. It was all Baba's fault, barging in with that stupid letter from Yajvendra. And Comrade Shashi appears to be one of those oversensitive types, a bit like Prithviraj Kapoor in New Theatre's film Manzil. Oh. Imagine Comrade Shashi as Prithviraj and me Kanan Devi and PC Barua is directing us. Gala Seth had a nose for dhanda. Let me give you an example. A new product had entered the market. It was called Ace Lime Juice. It was nothing but cordial concentrate of sun ripened limes prepared and packed in the factory in an actual orchid. I told Gala Seth Ace Lime Juice will be a flop because every Indian housewife worth her salt made nimbu pani at home. In principle Gala Seth agreed with me but he said high theory does not translate into good business practice so we sold uh, ace lime juice chewing gum which was which is some kind of dentally improper sort of thing vinolia white rose soap which is supposed to keep you cool fresh exhilarated and a noisy gadget called radio it was on such a radio that i heard that the government had increased milk prices by 2 annas per year from 12 annas to 14 annas a year there was an uproar 
Gala said it was unperturbed by the potential loss of business. In fact, he saw an opportunity in it. He purchased milk from the black market and used it for the preparation of ice cream and kulfi. It was irresistible, irresistible a roaring success. The outbreak of war and the extension of hostilities by the Japanese in December 1941 created problems, bloodshed, lots, loss of lives. That was the time I decided to become a nurse. Men are so juvenile. Don't they understand war is a racket? It has never determined who is right, just who is left. Yajavendra was part of this madness, silly goose. He was obsessed with the thought of getting little badges and medals stuck on his shirt front. The war caused problems. But you know, it did not deter the Hajis and their travel plans. Gala said used to arrange a 15-day ration for them. The Ghanis would be de- uh, delivered on a Hadgadi to a steamer at Zibuti Bandar. Special rates. A Chota Ghani that is 70 kilos of rice for rupees 6 and a Bada Ghani of 100 kilos for rupees 650 only. The Hajis preferred rice from Burma. Pulses, sugar, coconuts and so on. Once they de- disembarked, everything was loaded onto camels and they began their trek to Mecca or Medina. One morning when I was cycling back from the barracks, I met Shashiji. Shashiji had lost weight and the luster on her face. She wanted to visit a ship and see how the Hajis cook food in their makeshift kitchen in the bottom of the hull. I wanted to, wanted to see the kitchen in the ship. Also, I wanted to meet Comrade Shashi. Somehow I missed him. Gala said was a worried man. There were indirect requests to export opium to Hong Kong and China. He had refused. Baba was under stress. Due to World War II, there were huge withdrawals from the banks due to panic. It was understandable. Mother used to mention how the People's Bank of Lahore and the Credit Bank of Bombay were all liquidated during World War I. There were rumours of how bank officials were resorting to malpractice like creating fictitious debtors and indulging in cotton share speculation. We travelled in a bus. Due to rationing of petrol and car tyres during the war period, many car owners used to travel by bus. Comrade Shashi was as quiet as a mouse. I tickled his ribs and I said, Comrade Shashi, I prefer a tram to bus. Trams are too slow. Why should things be speedy? What's the hurry? Trams don't exceed 5 miles an hour. I like the two-storey trams. They are sort of cute. The BST has introduced double-decker buses since 1937. They are sort of cute too. That's different. Tram is cheaper than bus. Okay, perhaps you're right. A tram is better than a bus. The conversation came to a grinding halt. We visited the dock. Comrade Shashi introduced me to Mr. Kanwar, a pilot and examination service officer. For some reason, Mr. Kanwar took it upon himself to explain port rules and dock bylaws to me. He wanted to impress me. Shashiji was getting maha impressed by Kanwar. We walked to the wayside inn for jam, toast and coffee. Mr. Kanwar accompanied us. I walked behind Shashiji and Kanwar. When we sat down, Kanwar told Shashiji that we were sitting on the same table on which Karanjia and his friends had decided to launch the anti-fascist newspaper The Blitz in 1939. Shashiji was thrilled. She fluttered her eyelashes and exulted. How charming! So fascinating! Mr. Kanwar was a big bore. I had to look interested. I kept fluttering my eyelashes and said, How very charming and so, so fascinating! Just then Keshavji Nayak entered. Kanwar went to his table to pay salams. We got rid of Mr. Kanwar. Touch wood. Um, Comrade Shashi, hmm? isn't that Keshavji Nayak, one of the biggest cotton merchants in the city? They say he is bankrupt. Shh, don't say that loudly. Somebody may hear you. Comrade Shashi clasped his hand over my mouth. In any case, his bankruptcy is just a rumour spread by Nayak's business rivals. You know what Nayak did to counter it? He promised to repay each and every debtor. So the next morning, he assembled bullock carts from one end of Chinchbandar to the other. Each and every cart was stacked with gunny sacks filled with coins. It was a massive show of strength. No one has doubted Nayak after that. Isn't the water fountain in our gully built by him? I've seen workers washing in it when they come out of the docks. They sing. There's this one chap who sings Kundandal Segal songs. What was it? Do Naina Matwari. She hummed the song. The song filled the room. We sipped our coffees in silence. I wanted to say something to Comrade Shashi. I had 101 questions to ask her. And today seemed like an opportune moment. Comrade Shashi? Shashi ji. On cue, Mr. Kanwar had returned. He riddled. What is the restaurant? His reply. A place where one goes to rest and rant. Then he laughed at his own joke. Ah well, how it ends. And life goes on. I didn't meet Shashiji for a long time. It seems her mother was unwell. Mother was unwell. How hard and painful are the final days on an aged woman. (coughs) She grows weaker day after day. Eyes dim, ears go deaf, strength fades, heart no longer peaceful. Oh, to have seen parents being reduced to ill health. Oh, to have witnessed parents being reduced to living skeletons. 
or to fight with unknown diseases. When I tried to give mother medicine, she would say, he is the best physician who knows the worthlessness of most medicines. It was 1942. Yusuf Mehrali presented Gandhiji a bow bearing the inscription, Quit India. That became our slogan for independence. The AICC session was held at Gwalior Tank Maidan on 7th August. Sadoba Kandoba Patil, the uncrowned union Bachar of Bombay made arrangements for the sessions. Gala Seth knew Patil Sahib. So we got an opportunity to render services for a great cause. That's how I got to see the VIPs, the hundreds of Indian and foreign correspondents, an audience of 20,000. I heard Abul Kalam Azad's opening address. Then, I heard Nehru's historic resolution, drafted by Gandhiji of course, which sought the end of British rule in India. And then, Gandhiji spoke for two hours. He was ebulliently witty, effective. He culminated his talk with a simple cry, do or die. Frankly speaking, Mother didn't believe in the idea of a free India. She said it was going to be a mere transfer of power. Instead of, fleeced by, uh, instead of being fleeced by the British bureaucrats and government, we would be deceived by our own people, a thing which would be much more heartbreaking. Mother felt Gandhiji would not be able to prevent the partition. First, it would be a partition among Hindu-Muslim, then class, then caste. Hopefully, if good sense prevailed, there would be a partition on gender basis. That is, men and women in a, inhabiting different Asia, nations. It would be the best thing to happen to women in, in India. The British government had declared all Congress committees unlawful. It gagged the press. And yet the news reached us. A day Sevika scribbled messages on our road. The Congress Wallas had turned the city into a riot zone. It was madness. Naik bhai, naik bhai. No one gained a thing. No one was concerned about the Germans or the Japanese. For me, that was the bigger threat. They had bombed Kokonada and Vishakapatnam. There was first-hand information that the Japanese were planning a Pearl Harbor-type bombing in Madras or Bombay. I heard about the Japanese threat. Shashiji's Yajuvendra was fighting the Japanese onslaught in Burma. Where was he? Where was Comrade Shashi? Gala Sahib told me Shashiji was nursing her mother. Mother was my first and toughest patient. In spite of her ill health, she would sing in front of the mill gates. She and her friends, Ahilya Rangnekar, Durya, uh, Durga Bhagwat, Nidula Sarabhai would giggle like little girls. They demanded equal wages for women. One of them exhorted me to gather girls and protest. I did so and got rusticated from college. I was arrested on 26 January 1943 and placed in Arthur Road Jail. I was a prisoner in a class 2 jail. I had committed the crime of getting caught. I quoted arrest on 26 January 1943. Instead of Baikala, I was taken to BDD Chol which had been converted into a makeshift prison for political prisoners. I was so impressed with myself. You know, I was a political prisoner. When I was released, I learned mother had passed away. The day I was released was an anticlimax. The movement had lost its fizz. The others were gaining strength. Ambedkar, Dange, Randive, Rajaji, Jinha, Savarkar. I was busy at hospital. One late night in the early months of 1944, I heard a hiccup. It was Comrade Shashi. <laughs> I was returning from Gangeru. Nine of us were selected for a mission. It was supposed to be a sabotage of a truck carrying ammunition and military cargo. So we walked 19 kilometers to our destination, guided by torches covered with handkerchiefs. We reached the truck. The driver and his helper saw us and ran away. So we opened the fuel tank and tried to set the truck ablaze, but we failed. We tried to topple the truck, we failed. Then we tried to deflate the tires, we failed. Just then we saw a searchlight. The driver and the help were returning with military support. We fled into the night and escaped. May I ask what you are doing here at this unearthly hour? Are you wooing a pretty maiden, sweeping her off her feet? Uh, I am... Um, uh, What's in your hand? Uh, well, it's just a cyclostyle sheet of paper. What's this? Congress Patrika? How interesting! I've unearthed an underground movement. yoo -hoo! Are don't you hoo You will attract attention. Who gave it to you? Himmat, my college friend. You know, many of our students are involved. I'm not a student, but I want to get involved. I can distribute it to patients in the hospital. Some light reading. Don't mock. This is an underground newspaper. It is circulated in defiance of the British. If you are caught with this, you will be given a, a death sentence. I'm a woman. No one will suspect me. Can I write? I have some groundbreaking ideas about self-determination and sovereignty. I don't know. I'll have to ask. You Whom know. will you ask? Who's the editor? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no one knows who the editor is. In fact, I don't know where it gets printed. Every issue, they shift the venue. All I know is the Congress Patrika disseminates news about the freedom movement and sets guidelines for Indian citizens. Most of the newspapers support us and carry our news, except for the Evening News and Times of India. They are anti-national. You know, I suggest you stop reading the Times of India. Okay, bye. Where do you think you're going? Don't you know it's unsafe outside? 
I intend to distribute the Congress Patrika in Safiya Manzil and Lucky Mansion and later the Charles at Kalba Devi. There's heavy patrolling. You'll you'll be caught red-handed. So what? I'm willing to do or die. Are you cannot even halt your hiccup. Then how can you do or die? The only thing that can save you and your cause is the theatre. The theatre, but uh, there's a role of drum, some fun and frolic. It's show time, folks. The ceremony is about to begin. An actor is born. Let the coronation begin. Meaning? We change your appearance. Look here. This monkey cap will make you resemble a monkey when you go to Javeri Bazaar, a Parsi topi and a chota beard when you go to Dawa Bazaar or Dana Bandar, a little medical gauze around your head and a bandaid when you visit VJTI or Khalsa College. A man of many parts, a man who changes faces in order to live. So that's how it was: exhilarating, invigorating, stimulating, breathtaking. With my many disguises, I got associated with 42.34 meters. That is Congress Radio. The transmitter was located in Ajit Villa, somewhere in the middle of Bombay. The main brain of the radio broadcast was Usha Desai, Achut Rao Patwardhan, Chandrakan Babu Bai Zaveri. The broadcast used to start with the words, "This is Congress Radio, calling on 42.34 meters." We educated the people about the modus operandi of our revolution. We provided graphic accounts of revolutionary activities in the northwestern province and Bihar. Listeners were informed about the red shirts and the Khudai Khidmat Gars. We included pre-recorded messages and to- messages and talks by leaders of the national movement. It was Congress Radio which broke the news of the collapse of the German defences and the Japanese bombing of Chittagong and East Assam. I heard about the Japanese bombing on Congress Radio. Yajwendra was in the line of fire. Weeks ago, he had written a letter from Kohima. The Japanese were in Burma. They had surrounded Bishenpur Shikhar. Kohima was the main target of their operation. I was in a quandary. Baba was in Kutch to settle some family property dispute. I sent a message to Comrade Shashi. That night I returned home. I recall the day. All of us were still mourning Kasturba's passing away in Aga Khan Palace in February. I had attended a shok sabha, which was actually a secret political meeting. I hadn't eaten a thing, but my disposition received a cheery boost on seeing a note. It was from Shashi Ji. It said, "Meet me at 5 p.m. at three at Teen Sakina Manzil on 14th April 1944. Urgent." There's an interval here where I'll have a sip of water.